Welcome, everyone. My name is Victor Monga. I am based out of uh, Los Angeles, working for VMware. Today, I have Sandy with me. Sandy. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. Today, we want to talk about uh, the recent book we have launched. And uh, Sandy and I, we're going to just discuss a couple of things, what we have learned out of this book and how security community can leverage this and uh, get value out of it. And at the end, we're always interested in learning more about how we can improve it from our community. So give us your feedback, what you think about it. So Sandy, my first question is, when we read this book, we all in security profession and uh, in security community, we have heard and seen distributed security solutions. Tell us in this book, what is that? What would we learn out of this book? Yeah, absolutely. So when we think of distributed security solutions, and this is especially the case with the new normal, with the pandemic that's happening, most everyone is working remotely and applications that are accessed no longer live within you know, the data center with a bordering perimeter, people in the office. So this is why granular user-based policy is so crucial. So I found that in chapter six, where we look at NSX security capabilities, we can look at things like user-based firewalls for VDIs, IDPS, IPS, uh, NTA, NTR capabilities, as well as sandboxing. That's perfect. And that's the key, I think, for security, having a solution that's robust and talk about those security capabilities. In this book, you'll find it that um, we have illustrated and described all these capabilities and how it actually can be leveraged by an organization. So while I was reading this book, and um, what are the common challenge for organizations are segmentation based on IPs. And that's been a challenge for a while. Sunny, where do we find in this book to talk about a solution to that challenge? Yeah, anything related to, you know, zero trust network architecture or even segmentation, uh, that's going to be chapter four. So absolutely, as we move to the cloud or even have hybrid cloud, IPs are no longer going to be existing because you're going to have overlapping IPs, users are going to be moving, users are mobile again, right, the pandemic. So either security teams must compromise on the resilience of their security architecture or they have to compromise on simplicity of their security architecture. So what NSX actually offers is a resilient and simple way to have that agile security architecture that is built for change and not for you know archaic bare metal data centers. And you brought up a good point about uh, given pandemic, everything is distributed. So organizations or especially the security teams really have to look at a distributed security solutions so network challenges like uh, traffic hairpinning, where we used to have uh, within data center, we used to send traffic all the way to north, having uh, th that decision accept or deny, bring it back, or even simple things like, I don't even know what's going on within my data center about application topology. Does this book cover any of that? Yeah, so the NSX hypervisor actually has networking for layer three. And there's another tool called Verney if you couple them both. So that actually not only provides that application mapping, but dependencies as well. And this covers both physical and virtual infrastructures. What most people need to remember is even with other security vendors, they are actually a guest OS on top of the hypervisor. So even if you think from bare metal or perimeter, but even in the virtual data center, traffic would still need to be hairpinned for that you know, advanced inspection for anything above layer four. So this can actually cause delays in software upgrades and consumption and enablement. So those security vendors, meaning that when you want to adopt a new feature set, you're waiting on that security vendor or provider to update their code to match the code that you may be running on your hypervisor. And another network challenge I just wanna talk about is, you know, hairpinning does introduce latency. Even though it may not seem like a big deal to a human user interacting with that application or web server, a lot of those applications are actually latency sensitive. And with that additional inspection can end up breaking things. Yeah, and I think um, as we're talking about latency and applications, I think one of the topics that we hear the misconception about uh, VMware products or solutions, especially security products like NSX, that they're focused on only virtual machines. So in this book, 
We also talk about how it actually protects for your containers, physical workloads, or even cloud. So Sandy, what's your take on that? Yeah, so NSX can provide service-defined firewall capabilities on the container inside a VM or the containers on the physical server and public cloud. This is discussed around chapter seven. For users or the people who are starting to learn about distributed internal firewalls and micro-segmentation, they are very new to these terms like, let's say, east-west traffic or user-to-user -user traffic or user-to-workload traffic. Where do they go and find that information in this book? Yeah, absolutely. So chapters one and two are where you're going to want to start. And, you know, typically when I speak with customers, when you say micro segmentation, they're already thinking, oh boy, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of heavy lifting. That's a lot of things to do. So in these chapters, it's actually going through and telling you how you can wrap your head around these concepts and how VMware does it in the way that is very agile in a secure methodology. And as we all know, in security profession, there is nothing uh, secure as long as we don't tie it back to the... Uh, compliance. So do we also talk about any compliance uh, in this book, Sandy? Yeah, uh, the compliance piece is going to be in chapter two. So as you're looking through the other terms that we discussed in the topic before, uh, we're going to talk about, you know, HIPAA, PCI, SOX compliance, as well as going forward again with that zero trust network architecture and kind of giving you more information of relevance and why that's so crucial and important. A lot of times uh, compliance is what drives security. So being able to understand these concepts and what we can actually help you with, it's outlined in that chapter. For my security community, I am excited for you guys to go and check out this book, read it, give us feedback. What do you think about it? And um, give us your opinion uh, about uh, all the terms and the chapters we have discussed. So uh, last question, Sandy, what are the key takeaway from, from this book? What do we learn out of this book? I think overall the messaging is security is not hard. You just have to understand and learn how to prioritize it. So when we look at the best practices for things like macro segmenting a network and working on micro segmentation, but only focusing on one application, uh, with that, you can also add a distributed IDS IPS, right? So when you're looking to scale laterally or how your workloads start increasing or even hybrid cloud as they're bursting, still be able to have that advanced inspection on that traffic, as well as that east-west visibility, which is another good best practice for internal firewalling. Um, we want to understand and as well as protect and provide visibility into those applications, whether we know them and they're new or you know if they're legacy and have been carried over for quite some time. So understanding those application dependencies and being able to map out what that looks like and what they communicate with. Um, again, extending beyond the virtualized data center, looking at cloud, looking at being able to do hybrid cloud where you have both. Um, securing new applications before deployment, right? Being able to instill security best practices that, you know, tie back to compliance or security guardrails like NIST and CIS and proactively hunt for threats. That's important. Having a threat hunting program and having the correct tools to be able to adopt that workflow within a security operations center. I think those are the uh, best takeaways for this. And chapter eight covers all of that. We, uh, the name of this chapter is 10 or so best practices for internal firewalling. And that's my favorite because this gives me a checklist. As a security professional, it's very easy for me to go through that checklist and confirm where do I stand? What do I need to do so that it gives me a pathway to walk on it? Yeah, absolutely. And this has been a great chat, Victor. I really appreciate you inviting me to discuss this book. Absolutely. Sandy, thank you so much.